obviously last night I was in Pembrokeshire and I still am. So today I'm looking around Puffin Produce, so they're going to show me around now. Also, at the end of the video, I've got a little bit of last night as well, because some people last night wanted to be in the video because there's an audience of, of well over 100. They're like, can we be in tomorrow's video? So you'll see a little bit of that. So let's go and have a look what Puffin Produce do. And what, bla what is it? Blas Blasatia. Blasatia means. So are there actually puffins in Wales? I don't know where puffin came from, to be honest with you. I don't know, but yeah, there is off an island. Is um, it? Yeah. Everyone was asking last night, how many acres do you farm? Is it about 300? <laughs> no, about 150. <laughs> no, about, about 1,100 now, something like that. Depending on the short-term stuff. There we go. Puffin, so we're just trying to get in. We're locked out. We just arrived at where the spud stores are, and I've just noticed that the framework's on the outside, so the insulated boards are all on the inside, so the sheds look kind of like not finished, but on the inside they'll obviously look like nice white boxes, I hope. This is this is one of 22 cold stores, is it? Yeah. 22 cold stores, they hold 15,000 boxes in each one, I think they're stacked eight high. And what's in each box, a ton or a bit over? Zero five tons. Um, Zero. <laughs> yeah. Typically, that's our that's our typical load fill, um, but they are yeah. So, yeah. So, so Tom, boxes. when he digs his spuds, they come here, and some will be stored long term on this site, and then some of them up the road nearer where they're processed and packed will be there till Christmas, and they're packing for basically most of the shops in Wales, and a few for Aldi for for England. Here's today's quiz question for you. What are they? I don't think anyone will guess unless they've been here before. Them two green boxes. Look at this rig here. So this is for like cabbage or lettuce that it drives through. You cut them, put them in the boxes and it little baskets and it carries them to the back and then they'll be packed onto the trailers into boxes. We can go inside now, see the spud washers working. This is the water treatment afterwards. So once it's come through, it gets mixed with a flocculant, which causes the positive and negative ions to bond together. The silt drops out, gets sorted and through a filter press and then drops into this Richard Western trailer, which is probably really old, but the paintwork's still immaculate on it. Let's just see how old it is out of interest. A 1994. So what's that then? 30 years old, nearly. And that's the silt that it's filtered out. There's all bits of roots and skin. Tom didn't believe me that that trailer is 29 years old because it doesn't look it. That is uh, serious paint. Right, we're gonna go inside now and see what's going on. Another pile of boxes. This is a, a little baby spud washer. So you'll see it working now. Puts the spuds in, tumbles them round, and then they'll come out this end when they're ready. Open that door there, and they'll drop into here, and they'll assess them and grade them, and then that tells them. So every wagon that brings a box, the spuds in, one box will be dropped here, and then they'll wash it so that they know what the what the growers going to get once they're washed, if you will, like what the what the spec is. Does that make sense? What's that? Sorry. You're checking the spec, the yeah. spec, and that they're yeah, not damaged. So if they were bruised, you'd see that now, wouldn't you? Yeah, so we'll we'll peel them to check for bruising as well. We we cut them open, check for any, any internals, um, and then on the, obviously any skin defects that we see then all gets recorded as a percentage, and then the grower will have a kind of percentage at the bottom of defect level versus the spec that we yeah. pack into, so they've got an idea on what kind of return they're going to get on the crop. Um, and like I say, it gives us insight before we feed it into the factory, what to expect. And So when they've grown the spuds and they've gone into store, you'll say, well, that batch of spuds, 99% of them were perfect yeah, or something. So, so it helps us identify kind of poorer crops and better crops so we can plan it better. Um, and yeah, it just gives a lot more insight into into that. And we set them out now. Grows. Yeah, so, so they'll, uh, they'll come out now. Um, through the little conveyor. Right. We also do a dry mat on the top. Um, so 
So you can see what percent of your bakers and what aren't, can't you? See, that one there looks like it's been cut for the harvester when it's been dug, see? Yeah, it's got a bit of damage there. Yeah. Um, these on the whole look, look nice. Um, There's not many defects on them, to be honest. No, look good. Yeah, yeah. Right, the guy just put a load of spuds in that basket and I couldn't work out what he was doing. But he basically weighed the basket full and then weighed the basket, dipped in the water, and then that worked out the dry matter of the potatoes. That's well clever. This is uh, basically foggy, so it's high humidity to keep some of the green sort of veg fresh. So these are Savoy cabbage, some cauliflowers. We've got more Savoys, some other cabbage, reds. It's crazy to walk in a building on a warm day, finding foggy inside. Film a music video in here. This is a box tipper, so he's going to put this box in now. Then he's going to then take the empty off the top. And then he's going to clamp the box and rotate it round, which will tip the potatoes up onto that elevator. And then it goes then up into the grader. So in a second now, I think he'll press a button. And there you go, tipping the box of spuds out. And then as it, it just keeps slowly tipping them at the rate that the elevator takes it. So we'll go up there and see them getting graded. So we've gone up there into this. And then now, shakes a bit of soil off over that conveyor and they'll pick out any stones or any lumps of soil or any sort of rotten ones. So these are probably like what you call salad potatoes. So these are the smaller ones, but they've probably been graded out with some bigger ones. Sometimes the supermarkets call them new potatoes because they're small, but really they're not. Yeah, any damaged ones? Any damage, any stone, soil, like debris that we find coming across. They'll go down the chute. Yeah. And it shakes them over that conveyor and that, any small ones will drop through. And then they go off that way. Then it shakes over this one, it's got a bit bigger holes. And they go that way. And then they get a bit bigger again. And some mids. And then that's got bigger holes again, and you've got that size, and then that size, you've got like one, two, three, four, five different sizes of potatoes. That must have the box full. So, see the little trolley now taking the box off. And it started now filling the next box. And then that'll zoom off that way onto that conveyor over there. See how the conveyor drops down so it kind of like, like an elevator, like a lift, taking them to the bottom of the box so they don't bruise. And as the box fills up, these elevators start to rise. We're in the washers now, so it's basically a massive scaled up version of what we saw before doing the samples. Box rotator there, bringing them in, and through these huge baths, which we're gonna go around and see better. Tip the box in, that's a box tipper there, like you saw before. They're obviously cascading along now into the washer. And then we'll get tumbled around in that big barrel, which is just a massive version of what you saw before. Hopefully at the other end, by the time they pass through, you change the speed and the flow rate, they should come out at the other end washed. check for any defects and it goes off then off to the packing lines so over there they've been manually processed this is optical so the spuds have come through that and they're rotated and camera to look at the different angles of them and then as it comes along then if there's a defect it drops it in the right conveyor so some will drop in one conveyor and some will drop in another so that's basically doing away with three or four people 
these little robots here are putting the boxes on to be sorted then you've got another couple of the box rotators there the optical sorter can actually sort for scab as well so if you've got a variety that's very scabby it'll take that out it's one of the packing lines so you basically get a roll of plastic with a label on and I'm gonna find it now can't see i can see it on the bag anyway the potatoes will drop down and the bag gets full and it seals it with heat along and then if we grab one if you look at that so that is a grower near off davis that's actually tom's cousin for the red tractor on there as well and the variety is sagita oh no sunita there you go all packaged up and then they'll go over here and onto a turn table The boxes. This machine here is coming along and it's automatically stacking them in layers and dropping them into boxes. And it takes the box and just puts another layer in. Drops it down, takes the box again, and then it will, once the box is full, it wheels off that way. Once they're all in bags and trays, then the truck backs up to this loading ramp. So believe it or not, that isn't a part of the building. That's a fridge truck trailer. And the forklift will go in and load the trailer up and then they'll turn the fridge on then. And keep them cool while they take them to the shops. There's another wagon back in here as well. These are what, zero root? Carbon neutral potatoes. And who grew them? Root zero. Grown by Tom Reese. So they, what's the idea of them? There's, there's no carbon been used to grow them. Carbon's been offset a lot. Yeah. Right. But yeah, basically, we're doing a lot of establishing them, uh, cover crops, not ploughing, um, trying to reduce the tillage at planting. They're not irrigated, so these haven't had any water on them during the growing season. Um, just trying to basically reduce the inputs on the crop. Not lower fertiliser usage than the standards. Um, and are they deer in the shop, do you think? again. Will it be dearer in the shop? No, at least you'll do a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you this. If you want to know a bit more, there's the uh, different pages. Just looking at all these conveyors everywhere, it's very similar to the back of an airport where all the luggage goes. I think it whizzes round on motors. And if you look at that, it's all controlled by CAN bus by the looks of things. This little machine is like a robot that's stacking pallets automatically, nice and square. So they come along this conveyor and we've just seen the last batch get stacked. That's traveling along now and then this is gonna wrap it. So it'll stop in a second, that'll drop down and then it'll spin around and put, put pallet wrap and um, it will it be pallet wrap or that black banding. So if you watch now, This obviously stops it falling over, you see, in the, in the truck. Tightens it up with one of them plastic straps. And then it goes on the truck then and it won't fall over. It used to completely pallet wrap it, but that's quite wasteful. So now it just uses a little bit of black banded. So that's what it's put on. You notice that the lights are green in here and that's so that it's the ultra there's no ultraviolet light which makes the spots go green and go off so it's, it's not dark it's just got a different spectrum of light yeah so that is the automatic crane you can see it coming along this side here picking up the boxes from the dark store cold store is it before it goes to yeah. be packed yeah so. on train tracks this is where some of the waste comes out, but it isn't waste because it's just going to be animal food or cattle feed. Massive thanks to Puffin Produce for taking the time to show me around. Very, very interesting. It was set up, oh, I've forgotten how long ago they said, but a long time ago by a group of farmers that decided that they needed something in the area to pack and produce and work as a cooperative for selling stuff. There's Tom going now. If you want to follow me for the I'm going to come out, then you'll be wanting to Yeah, it'll be all right. I'll catch you up. Yeah, so thanks to them all for showing me around 
and also thanks as well to DLG. So Agritechnica have um, the DLG that organised Agritechnica have awarded me uh, the YouTube International Influencer of the Year, which is amazing. So that's what that is just on the side of me there. But anyway, next stop now, uh, Resort World NEC for the British Farmers Awards. That's about all for today. Ian's done the birthday bumper by popular demand. Here it is, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Leo and Benji Henley are three and four. Scott Ward is 30. Kevin James is 68. Brick Gaffney is seven. George Bradley is 11. Layla Wilson is 10. Lillian Williams, 84. Happy birthday to you. Henry Ayrton, Angela Lockwood, Nathan Lockhart, Heather Barton, happy birthday. And good luck to Amy Dowman starting a new job in agriculture. 49,424 raised. And if you've made it this far, and you're new to agriculture, tell me what you were doing before, I'd be interested to know. Right, where are we then? The North Bend It's forgotten. <laughs> Grassland Society. And who else is here? Cardi Gunshire Grassland Society, Narva and Clareberry. And the women in ag. All two of them. <laughs> There's a few more. <laughs> There you go, so that's 25 seconds of tomorrow's video.